Grace, mercy, and peace to you, God our Father, and our Lord, and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's been said that nothing shapes the way that we think, the way that we approach the world like language. From before the time of our birth, parents talk to their children. Many parents record the first words ever spoken by a young child. And as adults, it would be difficult to think about living in this world without the use of language. Have you ever wondered where language came from? The story of language, the story of words, is, is older than our human history, our human story. From the very beginning, the Spirit and the Word of God were living and active. The whole story of Scripture really is the story of language. It begins in Genesis 1 when God speaks. Before humans were created, God speaks to create the world. Then God gives mankind the gift of words and language by breathing his spirit into Adam and inviting him to name the animals. It gives him some sort of command over the language itself, over words. But by Genesis 11, people begin to use this gift of God, this words, in a tragic way. It's all a story about language. Verse 1 of Genesis 11 says, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, which sounds okay. Think about a world where there's no translations necessary. Everybody speaks the same language. Everyone knows the same words. Then in Genesis 11, we begin to see the problem with language. Verse 4 says, They said to one another, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. The tension builds. The hearts of mankind are revealed by, by their words, by their language. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make bricks and build a city or a tower. But we see in Genesis 11 why they wanted to build it. To make a name for themselves and not be scattered. To clear violation of God's command to fill the earth. And to call on His name, not their own. This great power in language, power to unite, power to divide. I was just talking with someone the other day about how the power in our, of our media, the language in our media, has the power to control our conversation, the very things that we talk about, and the things that we want to discuss and, and think about. The media has, through its language, reshaped our views on social issues. Television has transformed our moral values on issues like sexuality. Textbooks have revolutionized the world our way, the way our world sees God. Internet bullying, digital words on a screen have caused teenagers to commit suicide. Our president says a few words this week in the daily lives of our own children in our schools here in South Dakota are potentially changed. Entire wars have been started by a few words. Language has power. Words mean something. And God recognizes the power of language. He, can't, he can even can't help but admit the power that human language has. In verse 6, he says, The Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing they propose to do will now be impossible for them. The great problem is that humans have given up calling on the name of the Lord. And we're breaking what would be the second commandment. You should not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What a great invitation God has given us to call on His name by the power of the Spirit living in us. The name of Jesus has the power to heal, to change lives, to deliver the forgiveness of sins. We believe and know and confess as Lutherans that when 
when the pastor pronounces the forgiveness of sins, it actually does something. Those words deliver the thing that they say. By the power of language that God has given us by the Spirit, the name of Jesus has the power not to just talk about, but to actually give the gifts of God. Because the name of Jesus, because of the name of Jesus, you and I are spoken into a family relationship with God through holy baptism. He puts his name on us. No matter what happens, we have the promise of belonging to Jesus and eternal life with him. And yet, the builders of Babel, who thought they were so clever in their use of language, wanted to make a name for themselves over and against the name of God. To name the animals was a task given to them, but to make a name for themselves was not. And we do this today as well in a whole variety of ways that show our idolatry of our own self, our own desire to set our name above and beyond the name of God. We want to make a name for ourselves in human history in our demolishing of every marriage and sexual ethic we've ever pretended to hold to in our culture. We want to make a name for ourselves in human history in our embracing of the, hu- of the destruction of the human family as the bedrock of society. We want to make a name for ourselves in human history in our temptation to abandon the objective and unchanging word of God and replace it with what, us, what makes us feel good in the moment. And so, verse 5 says, the Lord came down. What an amazing statement that is. The Lord came down. The tower was to reach the heavens, but it's so small, God has to leave the heights of heaven and come all the way down to inspect this tiny structure of man. God came down. The early Christians understood this to be the pre-incarnate Jesus. For when God appears to humans in the Old Testament, we can expect it is the same way that he appears to us in the New Testament, in the Son of God. No doubt this was the way that God appeared to Adam and Eve, to Moses and to others. The Son of God, after all, is himself the eternal word who would become flesh later on. And so when God saw the sinfulness of man, he came down. And the punishment that the word of God inflicts is to confuse the word of man. So now they couldn't talk to each other anymore. And think about this irony. We talk big. But then God's word is always the final answer. But thankfully, this wasn't the last time in the story of language that God came down to this earth. He came down many times thereafter through the words of prophets like Moses and Elijah and Ezekiel, but ultimately God came down in the person of the word to live and die and rise before going back up again. And Jesus' words from the cross, it is finished, declare that all of our sins of making ourselves to be God are forgiven. The sin of letting our our culture form our morals instead of the word of God, forgiven. The sin of looking to our earthly government to guide our spiritual lives, Jesus has forgiven it. The sin of trying to make a name for ourselves apart from the word of God was forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we don't have to do those things anymore. For God has set us free from those in Christ. Those very words, along with the word in baptism and holy communion, are God coming down all powerfully to change the world. All powerful even through our human speaking. Rather than trying to change the world through our own work and actions, we get to point to Jesus who has already done it. Rather than proudly tell everyone that we are in control of our own lives, we can proclaim Jesus, who has taken control of our lives for eternity. And rather than needing to participate in the sins of our age in order to fit in, we are free to proclaim Jesus 
who has a more excellent way. That's the power of God's word. That's the power of his language, which is so much more powerful than our own. It's not humans' words, but the Lord's that accomplish so much. Today we celebrate that God came down on Pentecost and the Holy Spirit spoke. He didn't come down to teach us all Hebrew so that we could understand him in that language. Instead, God the Holy Spirit came down into every language that was spoken. All the languages created at Babel. So now the church takes up the call to translate and to proclaim the gospel into all the languages of the world. Always proclaiming the Lord's words and not ours. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We rise for the offertory. Mm-hmm.